Good morning and welcome to episode number 14. Today we are going to talk about paradigm shift. Now what is a paradigm? Paradigm is a filter of perception which is based on our beliefs, our thinking, our knowledge and our experience which we use to function in this world uh, to take decisions. It decides uh, the choices we make, the actions we take, uh, the methods we adopt to function in this world. Now, uh, generally a paradigm goes on for years together because once we hit upon a formula of doing things, we start functioning in the world and that's what we in common language call success. Uh, unless and until somebody makes a discovery, has a new insight and the paradigm shifts because there is a new filter of perception and that's when the things change, the world appears to change, the methods change. And the problem happens for many people uh, to adapt to this new paradigm simply because uh, human beings by nature are ours to change. Now what do I mean by all this? Let me explain as usual with two wonderful examples. The first story dates back 400 years ago. The year was 1526 and at that time India was ruled by a very ruthless cruel king called Ibrahim Lodi. Now uh, the Lodi family used to rule over India for several decades together and he was so ruthless, uh, so cruel and so successful that no other king ever dared to challenge him. It was given that Delhi would be ruled only by the Lodi family. Uh, however, there was one kind of a cynical guy who used to travel all the way from Afghanistan and used to dare to attack Ibrahim Lodi and consequently Delhi and he had done it 12 times and all 12 times he had failed. Uh, Ibrahim Lodi for reasons best known to him did not kill him. He used to defeat him and send him back. And in the month of January, the news from one of the spies came and Ibrahim Lodi was informed that that fool from Afghanistan is preparing to attack him again for the 13th time. Now, Ibrahim Lodi said, okay, don't take chances. Uh, be prepared and as usual defeat him and send him back. Probably Ibrahim Lodi did not kill him because he thought nobody else attacks me so my soldiers get some fighting practice and that's why I did not kill him but that's not there in history. This is my theory. Anyways, so Ibrahim Lodi was now all prepared. He had a huge strong fort which was defended by none less than 80,000 soldiers. He had elephants, he had horses, he had enough ammunition and unlimited supply of food grains to feed his army for as long as it takes to defeat the enemy. In the month of April, the so-called battle took place. The so-called fool from Afghanistan came with only 12,000 soldiers. Now, it was unfathomable and nobody could understand how he planned to defeat the army of Ibrahim Lodi with only 12,000 soldiers. Now, once they traveled from Afghanistan to India, they want to be half tired. Plus, he had to carry food supplies and in those days, battles used to go on for months together. So, he had to ensure that he carries food supplies which will last his army for months together till the battle goes on. And in the month of April, the first battle of Panipat took place. As expected, my dear friends, with 12,000 people on one side and 80,000 on the other side, the battle ended just in two hours flat. But in two hours flat, Ibrahim Lodi was dead. The fort walls were broken. 80,000 soldiers were blown up to pieces in the air. The horses and elephants were killed. How did that fool from Afghanistan manage to do this only with 12,000 soldiers? Because along with his 12,000 soldiers, hidden somewhere among those 12,000 soldiers, he had brought two cannons. Cannons which could fire bomb shells. And before that, in history, including Ibrahim Lodi, nobody ever knew what a cannon is. Battles were fought only with bows, arrows, spears and swords. For the first time, cannons were used and this was a paradigm shift. A new way of fighting battles. And so only with 12 cannons and 12,000 soldiers, Ibrahim Lodi was dead and the Lodi dynasty was finished. And the first Mughal emperor took over the reigns of Delhi and consequently India. And his next five generations ruled over us. His name was Babur. Well, if you think this, all this applies only in the olden times and historical times and now that we have had so many technological advances, uh, I, this paradigm shift and all that is irrelevant to me. Here's a second story. I still remember around 20 years ago, uh, on the front page of Times of India, I read this ad introducing our new model. 
book now for 35,000 rupees. And that was a new Nokia phone. And that, that was the time when even a sabziwala, a driver, a worker, a manager, a CEO, you name it, and every person used to carry a Nokia. Nobody ever thought anybody could beat Nokia in the market of mobile phones. And then slowly and gradually there was Blackberry and there was a time when we had Apple. Now Apple and Samsung rule over the market because then came the era of touch phones. Phones which were controlled by software more rather than hardware. Now the surprising part in all this is now that we have touch phones and everything is controlled by software, who was the one who invented uh, a touch phone? And I have asked this question to several people in my seminars and people say Samsung, some say Apple. Uh, and some do give the right answer. And the first touch phone in the world was discovered by Nokia themselves. But they had a 10 meter drop test. That was their filter of perception. So the phone has to be strong. So you drop a phone from 10 meters and it should not break. And naturally the first touch phone was made with glass. So they dropped it and it broke. And so they discarded the idea saying it's a useless idea. And then Steve Jobs said, why not make an unbreakable glass? So he used Gorilla Glass and today touch phones are used everywhere. Even the Kindle that we use today, that was first discovered by Sony. But the light uh, which the device threw on the eyes of the reader was so much, it used to disturb the reader. So they discarded the idea. Jeff Bezos took the idea ahead, he refined it and today we have Kindle and printed books are almost getting outdated because that paradigm is all over. My dear friends, the V of time is slowly moving but surely it's moving and in about 10 to 15 years there happens a paradigm shift. Now sometimes if we are not prepared for it, our life can go for a toss and we can become disoriented because we are not used to the new methods and it becomes very difficult for us to change our attitudes, our beliefs, our methods and catch up with the new paradigm. So constantly question your beliefs, keep your mind open to new things, listen and be aware of what ha happening around you. And as I always say, keep learning. I'm sure this makes sense to you. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please click on the like button. Like the Pathik page if you like these videos and want to have such learnings every week. Every Thursday a new episode is telecast. If you are on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. And please, if you like it, share it. Share the knowledge with all your friends and folks. Because that is the purpose of our making these videos. Uh, that's it for now. Learn more, contribute more, have fun in life and celebrate your uniqueness. See you next Thursday. Thank you very much.